Malaysia Airlines says it has not received any financial commitment from shareholder Kazana National as reported by Bloomberg. In a statement, MAB said that it is currently realigning its long-term business plan to the changing aviation landscape and that it is in ongoing discussions with Kazana as to the level of support needed moving forward. Earlier today, Bloomberg reported that Kazana is considering providing as much as 5 billion ringgit to MAB to see it through the COVID-19 crisis. MAB would have used this lifeline to resume some operations it has suspended, said the report, quoting sources. If the exercise had happened, the struggling flag bearer would have joined the ranks of other carriers around the world that have received aid in one form or another from their shareholders. MAB most recently welcomed a new chairman, ex-Petronas chief Tan Sri Wan Zulkifli Wan Arifin. Globally, various governments have pledged more than 85 billion US dollars to prop up airlines after COVID-19 decimated travel demand and grounded fleet. Top Glove recorded its best ever quarterly net profit of 347.9 million for the third quarter, which is more than quadruple what it posted for the same period last year. For context, this quarter's net profit is equivalent to 94% of the full year net profit for FY19. Revenue for the quarter jumped 41.85% to 1.69 billion from 1.19 billion ringgit previously. Unsurprisingly, the record numbers were due to the unparalleled growth in sales volume on the back of the global. COVID-19 pandemic. The group declared an interim dividend of 10 cent per share. In a statement, Executive Chairman Tan Sri Dr. Lim Wee Chai says its record high results are a testament to its strong foundation, which has been decades in the making. Going forward, Top Glove is expecting to see more robust quarters ahead, driven by strong demand growth, high utilization and additional capacity coming on stream. It has earmarked 3 billion ringgit for capital expenditure to build 450 lines with a new capacity of 60 billion pieces. Burma's auto saw its fourth quarter net profit plunge by 96% from 60 million to 2.5 million as COVID-19 measures severely curtailed business. Revenue fell 44.4% to 299.4 million due to the drop in sales volume in both Malaysia and the Philippines. In order to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, Malaysia had imposed the movement control order from March 18th. The Philippine government had likewise imposed a similar measure from March 17th to May 15th. As a result, Burmaz's full-year numbers were also affected, with net profit dropping 62% to 100.5 million and revenue falling by 30.2% to 1.8 billion. Moving forward, Burmaz admits that the outlook will remain challenging, with all economic indicators pointing to a slowdown, even as the Malaysian government attempts to soften the impact from COVID-19 with its stimulus packages. Burmaz says that any launch of new Mazda models will depend on market sentiment, as it also embarks on austerity measures, such as tightening costs and reducing overheads. But it has also embarked on some new marketing strategies via e-platform as it seeks to adjust to the new normal. IGB saw its net profit for the first quarter plunge by 64.3% to 17.68 million from 49.45 million due to a weak property and tourism market during the quarter. Revenue dropped by 12.7% to 291.42 million as its construction, property investment and hotel business all turned in weaker numbers. The only positive news came from its commercial property segment as occupancy rates remained above 80%. IGB's hotel division registered a loss during the quarter, while its Stoner 3 condominium project saw poorer sales. Going forward, IGB says the extent of the impact from COVID-19 on the group will depend on how long the outbreak will last and the level of economic activities. On its part, IGB says it is working to reduce operating expenses. Malaysia's sales value of wholesale and retail trade plunged 36.6% year-on-year in April 2020, the biggest decline in history according to the Department of Statistics. Chief Statistician Datuk Sri Dr. Mohamad Uzir Mahadin says that in the normal business environment, it is estimated that the sales of wholesale and retail trade fell 45 billion ringgit in April. 
The steepest fall came from motor vehicles, a precipitous 93.2% as showrooms and dealerships were closed during the movement control order period. Retail online sales, in contrast, saw a significant increase of 28.9%, indicating the expansion of e-commerce activities. Retail trade declined 32.4% year-on-year, while wholesale trade dropped 26.3% due to the double whammy of the MCO and disruptions in the supply chain from COVID-19. However, according to Uzair, the performance of wholesale and retail trade is expected to be better in May 2020 and the subsequent months as the government had partially lifted the MCO which allowed most economic sectors to return to full operations beginning May 4th.